There was a farmer named Tapan who worked hard to take care of his farm, cattle, and orchard. He had two sons, Rinku and Sunjo, who lived with the farmer. Tapan grew fruits and vegetables on his farm, which were known to be the best in the entire village. His hard work gave him prosperous business and life, which was envied by all the village folks. But his sons were not at all interested in his farming business, and both had different dreams. Trinku, the elder one, liked arms and fighting and wanted to be a warrior in the army. The younger one Sunjo was passionate about music. Tapan would worry about what would happen to his land when he was no longer there to take care of it, but he did not force his sons to work on the farms. Once he asked his sons what they wanted to do in life. Trinko replied he wanted to go to the army while Sunjo mentioned his musical dreams. Tapan allowed Rinku to fulfill his dreams and go to the army and asked Sunjo to work on his music but at the same time help him in the fields. Rinku left for the army, and Sanjo would occasionally help the farmer in farming, but he mostly daydreamed about his musical future. One day Tapan fell sick, and when he was almost dying, he took a promise from Sunjo to give back Rinku's share of the farm whenever Rinku came back. Sunjo initially adhered to the disciplined life set by his father but soon fell back to his carefree ways of life. He left the entire farm to the laborers, who saw that they had no master to administer them and started lazing around. Soon the yield of the farms started dropping and whatever produce was there would get stolen by thieves. Even the guards at the farm began stealing from Sonju. All this would have continued if Sonju did not have a dream about his father, who only reminded Hari of the promise he made to Tapan on his deathbed of giving Rinku his share. Sonju was jolted out of his dreamland of music and started taking stock of things. He found that he was left with very little money, which frightened Sonju, and he tried to take help from friends and neighbors, who laughed at him and turned down his plea for help. Finally, a shepherd boy from the village suggested to Sonju to meet the old lady who lived in the mountains and could help Sonju get his fortunes back. When Sonju met the old lady, she gave him a small bog with a small hole at the top. She told him that the box contained magic dust, and before sunrise, Sonju must sprinkle one grain of the magic dust on all corners of his farm to unfold the magic. When Sunjo began this ritual, he took notice of how his workers had left the farm unattended, and the crops were half cut. He woke his laborers and sent them off to work. Now, this ritual was repeated every day, and every day the laborers were pushed to work. Gradually the workers realized that they could no longer have an easy way out since their master was now aware of what was happening around the farm. With the laborers working as usual, the orchards and farms started prospering the way they were in Sanju's father's days. Sanju then went on to marry a girl, and he had two sons. When Sanju was on his deathbed, he asked his sons to open the magic box as the box was the primary reason for bringing back joy and happiness in his life.